I was going to continue the study uh, on into Numbers 15, but I, I think I think we're going to finish here on Numbers 14. I didn't I didn't bother to do much of a study because this is really a carryover from the last video, and we have to see. What ha see, the, here's the challenge. If you don't see yourself in the scripture, in, in the words of God, then you'll miss this as just stories being told. I see myself in this. I, it, in seeing myself, I see the mistakes that I make. I see the mistakes that I've made. I'm able to pass along to the next generation, my grandchildren, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, and whomever else this helps. Uh, God bless you. We're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. You, first thing you have to do is take personal responsibility for yourself, for your own learning, without projecting onto someone else and their experience. You have to really reflect on your own experiences. I have gotten involved with other people's projects to come in as the expert because I've done certain things. Maybe it's because, I don't know, I've started a church or, or two. Or, or, let me, or let's put it as simply as possible. I've been part of starting churches. I, I was not the lead pastor. I come in ex, as the executive pastor. I've done that couple times, nothing major, small churches. But I still have the experiences. I've gotten my real estate license, pest control licenses, insurance licenses, securities licenses. I have written a couple of books, nothing great. I've started, you know, ministry, uh, out of the country, you know, I've, I've, uh, you know, I've done the best I could to to do things, move my ideas forward. Run across a lot of experiences. Some of you would call that failure. I call it experience. I have these experiences so that I can pass these experiences forward to the next generation, because I may not get all the way <laughs> to my overall vision. And in fact, if you have a big enough vision, you chances are you won't get there. I mean, as far as your vision goes. Because the vision of God is, I think, usually larger than yourself. Just my thinking. My goals I should be able to accomplish. And I've accomplished some goals. I'm sitting right in the middle of a goal I accomplished starting an insurance company, starting a consulting practice. I've made some money at it. I have not made millions at it. I've made thousands. I would love to make millions at it. I have had some experiences surrounding myself with other like-minded people who also see their experiences as opportunities to expand and go further. Because if you take the experiences, say, of a David who ran into the jungle poor, who had a rich friend named Jonathan, whose father maybe admired him, but didn't like him. And let's just say this young man running for his life from a king who had been anointed king ended up losing his anointing while chasing down a young man by the name of David. Let's just, let's just call, let's, let's just say this happened. 
he really didn't start experiencing any kind of success until there were other people who also had some experiences. Let's just say there were 50 men, women, children, that sort of thing, that heard about his plight and they all experienced some sort of success working for someone else, but they were really ready to do some things on their own while working with another somebody who had, had also experienced some success working for somebody else, but then they got together and experienced a lot of successes. Let's just say this 50 had to live in their enemy's camp and the enemy allowed them to live in their camp because of the great respect that the enemy had for them because they had heard about the battles that he had won. Let's just say, let's just say the same thing happened to a young man named Joseph who went to live in Egypt because he Pharaoh had heard about the battles that. Let's just say that this is just the pattern of things. One of the first things we have to do then is stop looking down on other people's experiences. And maybe see the opportunities that are running to us. to be able to go through new doors of opportunity, but as, as we like to put it on a higher level. There's no higher level, but whatever. <laughs> at least not in my estimation. It, it's at the appointed time. We can miss the appointed time busy, busying ourselves looking down on other people's experiences. who are there to help you with yours. In Numbers chapter 14, you have such a thing happening here as well. Some of the things that I told you about hasn't happened, but we're going there. We're going there. <laughs> we're not there yet. But this is a this is a these are time tested patterns that if you're not willing to look at yourself and you're busy looking at other people, you won't realize it's you. It's you. I realize it's me. In Numbers 14, there's the same situation where you have all these people that have enjoyed the fruits of the experiences of Moses. This man that at 40 years old left Egypt because of some a thing that he did that was should have put him in in fact should have he should have lost his life. And he went running away into what they would what some would call a foreign land which in 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 actuality it was still his family's land just his uncle generations before and went and trained somewhere else came back and was sharing his experiences with these people at a very late stage in the game age of 83 years old and was walking these people into the promised land while even his brother and his sister were questioning him. His own family members. Helping these people get to a certain place where they can enjoy the fruits of winning what God had promised them generations in the past. But they were unfamiliar with history. There was no education. Except for two. Except for two. Joshua or O'Shea of Ephraim, 
who come from the loins of Joseph himself, second youngest to Jacob. And so we know where he got his education from. And a young man by the name of Caleb from the tribe of Judah. The same Judah that slept with his daughter-in-law. She had a baby. Study to show yourself approved. Dinah, which was Joseph's sister, had a baby as well. She was raped. And a man from Shechem, actually his name was Shechem, uh, raped her. And so the baby was left at the gate of Egypt by Jacob. Joseph married that woman that was the, the, the child that became his wife, and they had two children. And as they, as Joseph passed on, those two children grew. They were adopted before he passed on into the tribes of Jacob. This is moving forward, and these are all challenges, and these are all experiences. Well, here we are at Numbers 14 with this rat-a-tat-tat group of people, tribes, now, recognizing their, their forefathers under their tribal names, and these young princes... Some understood their history, some didn't. It's now it's time for them to go into the promised land. So Moses, the old guy, sends the spies into the land, a group of 12, to come back with an excellent report and an opinion they probably should have kept to themselves. But I digress. The other 10 didn't come back with a report. The other 10 came back with an opinion. It was too hard. The land was too good. The cities were too fortified. The people were too strong. The land was too healthy. As though they wanted to take over a decrepit land. And Jacob and Caleb said, the land is good for us. God has prepared it for us. He's gone before us. We can take the land, and they've made the collective decision that they can't do it. God the Father is astonished. I truly mean that. Because he asked Moses, he said, how long will these people... <laughs> you know, how long will these people treat me with contempt? This is where I'm challenging you to find yourself. Are you treating people with contempt? Are you being treated with contempt? How much time do you need to confirm that God has blessed you with the land? Let me tell you when it's too late. When he sends you backwards... It's too late. You're going to have to start all over again. And that's where we are today. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be err, which is not? They believe me. In other words, they don't believe me. How long are they not going to believe me? After accomplishing all these goals that we've talked about a little bit. I didn't we didn't talk about all of it, but I'm just trying to give you a taste so you can see 
See, this isn't about you hearing a story about God and Moses and Aaron and Miriam and Joseph in the Bible. This is about you seeing these characters in your own life so that you can locate yourself and change your mindset. In the year 2024, one of the biggest challenges is we have a bunch of people who are trying to change the world system instead of trying to enjoy the kingdom of God. They think that the two are synonymous, that the world system has something to do with the kingdom of God. So therefore, we better work on changing the world system. Old wine scans. No, they left Egypt. They left the world system. And then they were dying to get back to it. Literally. Because they didn't want to take the opportunity to move forward in the kingdom of God. Even though Jesus was showing them. The Lord was showing them, because y'all want to hear Lord, Jesus, was showing them through the hand of Moses the work that it took to get to the promised land. And they didn't want to go because they didn't believe. How long? Will they provoke me with all the miracles that I've been showing them before their time, during their time, even now? So this is the conclusion that was drawn in Numbers 14, chapter, uh, chapter 14, verse um, 22. We'll start, but we won't stay there. And this is what he says, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these 10 times, have I not hearkened to, to my and have not hearkened to my voice? Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto the fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. So the majority of the 12 tribes did not see it. Save Caleb and Joshua. Their tribes. Judah, which the Jewish people claim, but you forgot about Ephraim, which I personally believe, believe is the Jewish people. Verse 24, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit which with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went and his seed shall possess it. Verse 25, now the Amalekites and the Canaanites, which they were scared of, dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow I'll turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long this evil congregation which murmur against me, I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, saying unto them, I live saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Take your ass back to the Red Sea. You want to go back? Go back. It was after this that God started all over again in, in Numbers chapter 15, all the way back to the beginning 
he went all the way back to Leviticus chapter 1 with the law of the offerings. Let me be transparent with you. I have definitely been recently one of those that said, Lord, I have lost everything again. <laughs> again, not every, you know, you know, uh, I'm trusting God for some very simple things. At least in my head, they're simple. But I'm, I think they're predicated on me helping other people. And at this stage, I don't know if I even want to do that anymore. Being very transparent with you on April the 2nd, 2024. Because when you have to deal with stiff necked people, in particular those who say they want to do something extraordinary, but are really comfortable with their ordinary, and you come in to add your value. And they tell you that you don't have enough value. I've been told this over and over and over and over again. It makes you question all the licenses, the study, as though all those hours of studying finance and hours of studying the word and hours of studying real estate and hours of studying all the things that you have put into being a part of a process of going into the land of Canaan. You've done the best you could. This is me speaking, possibly from my flesh. I think it's from my spirit, though. You've done the best you possibly could to prepare yourself to be worthy, if you will, to add value to other people so that you can do extraordinary things. Read books, listen to audible books, <laughs> to be a part of something extraordinary. With the understanding that I did not come from the background where I went to an Ivy League school and joined Skull and Bones, the Masons, the Qs, the Alphas, the Divine Nine. So I don't have a network of people that I grew up with. And years ago, came to California to raise a kid who's no longer a kid, now lives in Texas with her fiance and her three kids. My other son's going to Nepal. My other son lives in, in Japan. I've had a full life up to this point. So I have no complaints legacy set, accomplish some goals, happy with the things that I've done. If I was to die today, I've done pretty good. All that means nothing to people who say they want to make it to Canaan. But they're scared of the giants. Jeez. Cash App Dollar Sign, Mr. Paul Dozier. The Giants, by the way, which are, are members of the tribe as well. Just wanted to throw that in. Who understood their history. I just. Cash App Dollar Sign, Mr. Paul Dozier. Hey, listen, we're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. <clears throat> Oh, 
man, I could say so many things. But anyway, we're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. Thank you for joining us on the journey. If this is a benefit to you, uh, please like and share on whatever platform that you see this or hear this on. Uh, if it helps you, it'll help someone else. And thank you. Thank you for joining us on the journey.